Hey everybody, it's Dr. Riser. If you like what you see in our videos, make sure you click subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos about functional medicine, nutrition, and tips on how to reclaim your health the easy way with Functional Health Center of the Carolinas. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Reiser. Another Whiteboard Wednesday. We have a PSA today about an organism called Candida. So I hear this a lot from patients or people online uh, in forums talking about, I bet you have a, a, a yeast overgrowth. I bet you have a Candida overgrowth. I have white on my tongue. I have all these things and, and symptoms, and I bet I know that I have a Candida overgrowth. So the first thing that we want to talk about today is don't jump the gun and immediately think that you have a yeast overgrowth. So we're going to go through what the symptoms actually are, how they can be confused with other types of uh, infections, and what you actually have to do to get rid of this, and what type of diet to be on. Because there's a lot of diets out there that claim to be the best for this, especially the anti-candida diet, and it doesn't exactly do the trick. So candida is a uh, parasitic fungus. It acts as a yeast in the body, and it's actually a normal part of our digestive tract. So that's one thing I want to get across to everybody today is that this is normal. You're supposed to have this. So a lot of doctors will treat this as if they have to eradicate every single microorganism. So when you do you know, find out that you have candida, whether it's through a blood test, a stool test, which is what we would prefer, um, don't immediately go towards an antifungal to take care of it because you don't want to kill this entire thing off. Candida is naturally there to keep other bacteria in check, other microorganisms in check in your gut. So there's a balance to these things. You must have a balance of microorganisms in your GI tract. So how do you know if you have candida? Um, it's hard to tell. I mean, the, the symptoms that you'd most likely see are fatigue, uh, you'd have maybe some skin rashes, you'd have low libido, brain fog, muscle aches and pains, hormonal imbalances, the list goes on and on. But if you've been watching our videos or if you've been, uh, or if you're own, your own health detective, you know those are symptoms of many different things. So the best thing for you to do in, is, is uh, get a stool analysis. So one that we use is through doctor's data. It's a simple stool analysis. You'll ship it off and it will come back and it will detect these organisms along with various other organisms in your stool. What we're looking for to see if there's too much of this, not that it is there, but if there is too much, because if there's too much yeast, that means that it's going to create something uh, or create an imbalance in your gut and other bacteria that are beneficial for you will go low. So what do we do if we know we have it? That's the biggest question. A lot of you always ask me that and we'll get DMs or we'll get patients that come in and say, what do I do if I have candida? I'm tired of feeling bad. I'm tired of not being able to lose weight. What can I do? So we have to break down the diet and we have to figure out why the overgrowth happens in the beginning. There's some easy answers like being on antibiotics before where it kills off your good bacteria. Um, this is pretty opportunistic as far as the microorganisms. So that means that if there's an imbalance elsewhere, it will start to grow. But it also feeds on one thing and that is sugar. So candida will grow from sugar, particularly sugars that are hard to digest. And that means that they will pass through the gut and the candida will fill off them. So we have three different types of sugars. Let's list those right now. We'll take the candida off the board. So three basic breakdowns of sugar. You have your monosaccharides. And that basically means one single layer of sugar. And so something like glucose. So just pure sugar. You have your disaccharides. You guessed it. That means two. And we have things like lactose. And then the last one we have would be polysaccharides. So you have your poly, and that just means more than two. So you have many different layers, and you're gonna look at sugars like your starches with this. So what does that all mean? So the biggest stuff that you have to avoid would be these two, because your body has a harder time breaking down these layers of saccharides into sugars. So if you're eating something like a polysaccharide, polysaccharide sugar, let's say you're eating a starch like grain products, breads, pastas, those types of things, hard to digest, so they pass through, and if they get to that yeast, they will feed the yeast and the yeast will replicate. So these others would be your monos, so if you're things like uh, fructose and glucose, you're eating things from fruits, vegetables, that gets absorbed very quickly, not a chance for the yeast or the candida to actually use that as fuel and to replicate. So. The diet that we're looking at is the anti-candida diet. It says take away all of these. I mean, you can't even have carrots on this diet. 
And that's a problem. And the problem is, and most people will even tell you, or if you're watching this, you're saying, well, wait a second, if sugar feeds yeast, why should I take all sugar? Why shouldn't I just take all sugar out? The problem is if you take all the sugar out of your diet, you're left with mostly proteins and fats, and that will put you into ketosis. And the issue now, if we're into ketosis, is you produce ketones. Well, ketones will also feed yeast. So there's the issue. You have to find a balance. So what I suggest is when you're doing a so-called candida diet, to keep the monos in, keep your monosaccharides in, keep eating the fruits, the vegetables, because they'll get absorbed and the yeast won't actually feed on those. So that's the diet you should do. A couple of diets that come to mind would be like a FODMAP diet where you're kind of pulling down the carbohydrate content, but not low enough to where you're gonna get into ketosis. So let's say you start that diet, that's gonna help kind of squeeze the nutrients away from the yeast. Now we need to use something other than drugs or antibiotics or antifungals to get rid of this. So what we would use would be botanicals, herbs, vitamin, or herbs and uh, uh, different minerals, vitamins, things like that, but just generally herbal blends and then a probiotic. One probiotic I like to use was actually another yeast. So to fight off candida, we're gonna actually use another yeast and that is called Saccharomyces boulardii. So that's a yeast that you can use. It's a probiotic. You can get it from various different companies. We actually carry it in the office. You can use that, and as you take it, it will actually increase secretory IgA, so your immune system function, and kill off the candida. Other things that you can use, herbal blends, if you just search these online, one that would come to mind would be Uva Ursi. And so you can get this pretty much at any kind of health store. It's an herbal blend, but it will kill off candida. So if you use that dye that I'm talking about with monosaccharides, eliminate your disaccharides, your polysaccharides, and you implement things like Saccharomyces boulardii, uva ursi, and different anti-yeast botanicals, that's gonna bring things back into balance. That's what you're trying to accomplish. You don't wanna eradicate all of the candida, you just wanna get rid of enough of it so that you can have a balance. Because if you get rid of all the yeast, what will typically happen with patients, and I'll see this all the time, where they'll come in and say, I'm on an anti-yeast diet, I've been on it for six months, and I have the same symptoms, what's actually occurring is you've gotten rid of the yeast, but now you have SIBO. Now you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. All these other various bacteria strains are now uh, basically being overgrown or growing too much because there's no yeast to keep them in check. Get it back to the balance. Don't follow some of these fad diets. Just make sure you're dropping the carbohydrate content down from things like grains, uh, breads, pastas, all those, and stick with your simple sugars from your fruits and vegetables. I guarantee your yeast will go down, you'll manage it, you'll keep the balance, and you'll start to get rid of the brain fog, the fatigue, the weight, and all the things that go along with yeast.